Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to this uh, event of the uh, Griffith Institute Lunch and Learn. It's going to be an Ask Me Any session with uh, about STEM at AFRL RI here in Rome. We're lucky to have Jeff DeMantis here as our guest speaker today. He's from the Air Force Research Lab Information Directorate. He's the Director of Test Lead, and he'll be leading us the opportunities of what we've done or what they have done and from STEM outreach from the past to the present and to what we plan on going into the future. Uh, throughout his entire career at the Information Directorate in Rome, New York, Mr. Demandis has served as a STEM Outreach Program Manager. He was responsible for creating the Information Director STEM Outreach Program in 2008. From that time frame, in the, from six years, first six years, he took a program that was, was not in existence to become a nationally recognized program in STEM Outreach. And in one, his program is actually setting the standards for a lot of the Air Force STEM programs going on right now. So with that, I'd actually like to uh, have Jeff come over and give us a great presentation on STEM and then how we as a community can actually increase our STEM capability. Okay, so that's what we're really here for is to have an understanding of where we are today, but where we as a community can, can strengthen our, our perspective and create a great opportunity for a lot of our young kids out there to get them into STEM type programs and STEM education and keep them excited about STEM activities. So Jeff, I'd like to hand it over to you. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so good afternoon. And uh, before I start, I just have a question for the audience. So um, how many software engineers does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> actually, actually none, because they won't change it. That's a hardware problem. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry, all right. So anyways, uh, thanks, Mike, for the introduction. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about STEM. We're gonna talk about some of the things we've done in the past at RI and um, you know and then we're going to actually bring it back around and talk about some really exciting things that's that we have in the future so let me just nope it's not working can you okay you can go to the next slide uh, nope it's not working okay all right Thanks. So as Mike said, in uh, 2014, the Information Directorate was the winner of the Federal Laboratory Consortium for Technology Transfer National STEM Award. So this is a really great honor. Again, as Mike said, this is six years after we started our STEM outreach program. We were recognized nationally. And again, this is definitely a director level award. There's a lot of people that played a part in this. And it was a really, um, it was just um, an awesome, uh, an awesome uh, reward for uh, the directorate. And then in 2019, I was totally blessed and honored to win the Air Force uh, STEM Championship Award at the Air Force level. And even though I was a winner of this, this is definitely just, um, just represent all the hard work that goes on at the lab from all the people. There's just so many people that make STEM what it is. And so again, it's just great to be recognized as a director as a whole. Yeah, so it's not, I can't, no, it's not working. Okay. Okay. So um, there's a lot of different outreaches that we do at the Information Directorate. Um, you know, they're, they're listed here. These are a lot of what, what we do, but I'm gonna highlight and talk about a few of them, those that are in orange, but feel free to ask questions in the audience or here in, at, um, that are here live in person if you have questions on any of them. But we're gonna start off with the annual challenge competition. So this is an event that we do during spring break every year. It's for our high school students. They come here to the Griffiths Institute and they work on a real world problem that has been developed by some really smart people at the lab. So um, this is, we've been doing this for 14 years. And so we're excited to have another event this coming, uh, this coming week. Um, each, each year, the, the challenge development is developed by one of the mission divisions at the information directorate. There's four mission divisions. So this year, RIS or the information systems uh, division, they're the ones that are developing this problem. And uh, so the kids, they come in for a week during their, school, their spring break and they work, you know, eight hours a day, they're working on a real world problem. It's a challenging problem in the hopes of, um, you know, winning prizes. So, you know, I definitely give kudos to the kids who participate in this because a lot of their friends maybe are on vacation, they're sleeping in, they're playing video games all day, but these kids come in and they work hard on this, on this problem. So this year um, we have seven schools participating and each school sends two students and a teacher and they come here for the full week and they work on a problem. 
And this year, I don't want to give too much away about the problem because, again, we keep this close hold till the kids come Monday. But it is, again, like I said, from the Information Systems Division. And it has to do with machine learning and image classification. So it's, it's going to be exciting. It's something very relevant uh, to the Air Force and just in technology today. It's probably going to be something that uh, the kids maybe have not done much uh, in terms of what their regular school work. So that'll be pretty exciting. So some of the past challenges we've had include um, opti optimal solutions to a grid-based games, optimizing product distribution networks, solving a cyber crime. So again, these are very relevant problems to what we're doing at the Air Force that the kids work on. So those are just a couple of the, of the past challenges that we've done. Okay, next thing I wanna highlight is our STEM summer camps. I'm, I'm gonna save my, my, the, the description, the details about them to the next few slides because I have some pictures to show. Um, but we, we, do, we do have a, quite a few STEM summer camps that we run and that we have been running since the beginning of our STEM program. Uh, so next I wanna talk about FIRST Lego League. So if any of you guys have heard of FIRST, FIRST is an organization worldwide. They have competitions all across the globe, kids from all different countries participating. So FIRST Lego League is a competition that's geared for, let's say kids from fourth, fifth grade up to eighth grade, where the next two FIRST Tech Challenge and FIRST Robotics competition, those are more, um, I would say junior high and high school level, more complex, bigger robots. But anyways, with FIRST Lego League, um, They've had these events at uh, SUNY Poly for a bunch of years, and they're awesome. They're exciting events. If you just think about like a sporting event for a high school where the, the stands are full and the kids are cheering and parents are cheering, it's like that, but it's for a robotics competition. It's a lot of fun. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to mentor a few teams um, from one of the local elementary schools, it's, and it's great. It's very rewarding. Uh, the kids have a, they have a, a, a huge, huge amount of fun with this. They actually build robots. They have to solve missions. They program the robots. So they're learning some introductory to programming. They're learning mechanical skills of how to build a robot. And, uh, and then they get to compete. And so it's a, it's a really fun event. And here, I'm just going to pull. This is the latest uh, Lego education kit. It's called Spike. I haven't personally used these, but I really like these right away just because it brings me back to my youth. It looks like Miami Vice colors. So this is, I, I love this kit, it's, it's awesome. So there's just an example. So before I move on uh, to some of the photos in the STEM camps, does anybody have any questions about any of the activities that we've done in the past? Anything I've talked about, anything from virtual land? Okay, I'll just go right on and feel free to ask questions throughout if you, if you have any. Okay, photos are a lot more interesting to look at than just text, right? So here's some photos of our, of our uh, different camps and some of the events we've done. Engineering camp, we've been doing this for a while. This is a very hands-on you know, camp and lots of hands-on activity. And you're gonna be hearing that um, quite, quite a bit, you know, hands-on. Everything we do is very hands-on. We want the kids to be doing and working and, and touching and, and doing fun things like that. But in this engineering camp, they, they do things like basic circuitry, building boats out of paper and seeing if they can float. A lot of hands-on activities, like I said. Uh, cyber camp, this is geared more for like the high school kids. So for the cyber camp, they're learning things such as virtualization, cyber defense, and Linux. Um, and then they, they, do the, they, they learn throughout the week. And then on Friday, they have a capstone event where they do a, a capture the flag event. And so that's really neat for high school kids. A lot of colleges are doing these sort of events, but again, this is at the high school level. So it's a good introductory again for kids who want to maybe go into a cyber career field. Drone summer camp, just as it sounds, it's all about drones. And as you know, we're right here at the, you know, Innovare, which is at the New York, the UAS test site at Griffiths Airport. Drones is a huge thing in the area and it's going to be even getting more, you know, recognition, more um, opportunities in the future. Your question? For the drones? Yeah. yeah, drones is for high school kids as well. Ah, that's a good question. So signups for all of our STEM camps are probably gonna be, I'd say we normally open them up sometime in May and that'll be all done at the Griffiths Institute website. Yep. So with the drone summer camp, uh, kids learn, you know, some of the basics of like flight and the proper properties of flight and like just some basic concepts of drones. And so for this camp, we partner with MBCC and it's an awesome partnership. I'm really excited about this because, so the kids build the drone, they learn about drones, they get to keep a drone, they take it home and that's, they get to keep it and have it. But the awesome thing is, again, we, we work with MBCC 
and they are one of the few programs in the country that actually have a drone technology degree. So we get the kids excited about drones and then we tell them, hey, you know, right here in town at MVC Rome campus, you can get a drone degree. And, you know, so you don't have to go far. You can stay here to learn about that. And then there's a lot of jobs in the area with drones too. So it's just, you know, we like keeping the kids here local and just knowing, hey, you don't have to go far to go in this technology. Okay, annual challenge competition. We talked about that a bit. Um, Lego camp. So we've been doing Lego from the beginning. When we first started doing STEM outreach back in 2008, I'll say, that's all we were doing. That's, we did, we did it one one Lego robotics camp, and then we did after school clubs with the local school. So we pretty much started with Legos, and then we've just grown to so many more um, different uh, STEM events. Quantum camp, so quantum is a big, big, big thing, new thing, right? Quantum technology. Mike's daughter's working on that over at the lab. And so that quantum group, they have developed a summer camp and I have to read the description because it's, I don't want to get it wrong. Students gain an appreciation for the laws of physics through an understanding of energy, momentum, fields, waves, macro systems, micro systems, and quantum mechanics. I mean, it sounds deep, like I, I should attend that camp. I think I would learn a lot, but they, they present this material to the kids in such a relevant way. Like I, I got to watch um, and sit in on one of their camp days and the kids were just having so much fun. I mean, again, these are deep topics, quantum, you know, but the kids were learning about it. They're getting excited about it. And, and again, we have fields right here in town, right across the street at the lab uh, for quantum. So getting kids excited. Yeah, and we have, the, and the quantum lab has two labs right downstairs. That's right, thanks, Mike. So yeah, so quantum is a growing, uh, a growing field. Let me go to the next one. Yes, okay. So up in the top left corner, we have students dissecting a computer. So if you think back to biology class when you were a kid, you know, you dissected the frog, you dissected the worm. So the kids actually get to take apart a computer. They get to, you know, touch a motherboard or a, a processor, the graphics card. They get to see all the components of, the, of a computer. And, you know, it's like, I think that's really cool for kids because a lot of them, obviously, they're all using computers nowadays, but they probably haven't really seen the guts of a computer. So that's a fun activity for the kids to actually take it apart. And, and the best part is once they take it apart, like towards the end of the day, we're like, okay, now we have to put them back together. <laughs> and the kids are like, what? And of course they can't because there's screws and nuts and all over the tables and parts all over and there, there's no way they're good, but it's fine. You know, we don't care. We just kind of tell them that as a joke. Um, the second picture on the left in the middle there, uh, that's the cyber camp. Again, we were talked about that capture the flag event. So on the last day, they're, they're playing a capture the flag uh, event against the two different teams. Um, the bottom picture down here, this is from the engineering camp, and this is one of the activities where they have to keep a marble in motion for as long as possible. So I don't know if you can tell on the, on the slide there, but the kids develop like a, almost like gutter out of paper. They have it going in a zigzag fashion on the wall and then coming out. And so basically they time the kids and who can keep a marble in motion for the longest amount of time. And that was one of the solutions that was actually a really good solution. Uh, going up to the top. That's the anechoic chamber over at the lab. And anechoic chambers are used for testing RF frequencies and whatnot. And we have tours of the lab where they can come in and the kids are like, wow, look, it just looks like this big, big room with all these cones in it. Um, and you know, the cool thing is right here at Inavari, they're building an anechoic chamber. It's called Sky Dome and it's right next door here. And so basically it's a big netted facility for flying drones but it's also gonna have these cones all around it for doing testing. So they're gonna have one of the largest anechoic chambers in the country right here at Inovare. Uh, picture, middle picture on the right, uh, student tries on an Android tactical assault kit vest or ATAC. So that's a, a, a technology that was developed across street at the lab. And during one of the take your student to work days, the kids got to try that on and see how that works, um, you know, and interacts with the phone. It's a, it's a really neat technology. And the last one there is Arduino camp. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with Arduinos. They're kind of like a little circuit board. So the kids in the Arduino camp, they learn about programming fundamentals. They learn about input and output devices. And it's basically like a little circuit board. And it's, that's a, another fun camp that we do um, here. And there's a new camp that we're actually doing this year for the first time. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Sphero. It's like these little, they're really hard plastic shell, but it's a ball that you can control with your phone or, or tablet device. Basically, you just download the Sphero app and the kids learn the basics of programming, of turning, and there's like a little LED board. You can put text on there, but the kids learn basics of programming. And this is geared for like 
I would say elementary school, maybe second grade, third grade, fourth grade. So it's great. So at that young age, you can still, you know, introduce them to concepts of uh, coding. So they might not be typing text code, but they do little, little block codes and they can learn just lateral thinking and processing. Oh, I need my robot to do X, Y, and Z. So I need to program it accordingly. Okay. Any questions on any of these camps that we've talked about? Anything? Okay. Okay, so COVID. So obviously 2020, COVID impacted all of us in one way or another, and STEM uh, was not exempt from that. So when COVID came around in 2020, uh, a lot of the Air Force bases around the country just said, nope, can't do STEM camps. It's too hard. We, there's, the rules are changing. We don't know what we're doing. It's just too hard. We're not going to do STEM camps. But kudos to a lot of the people across the street at the lab. They said, no, no, let's still try and do it. Let's see what we can do. So we converted all of our, well, five of our camps into virtual camps. So uh, Arduino, cyber engineering, Lego robotics, all went to a virtual platform. And it wasn't easy. And that's, I mean, you, that sounds, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Just get on Zoom and do it. But no, it, it's not that easy. It took a lot of work, but they, they did it and they, they succeeded. And it was, it was a big success. I mean, so basically what we had to do was take all the kits, mail them to people's houses who, part, who joined and, and signed up for the courses, or they had to come up, pick them up here at the, at the GI. And it's, it's just, a, it's a different challenge. It was, it was hard, but they did it. So, but, and I'm really proud of all the folks who, who were able to convert that to a virtual camp. And in, in addition to the, those four camps I mentioned, we actually created a new camp in 2020 called Steam Rocks, where they're it's kind of like a geology thing, talking about rocks and different types of rocks and whatnot. So the benefits of this virtual platform for some camps was, hey, we got kids from all over the country participating. That was kind of neat. You know, Texas, California, kids from all over signed up for the camps. So that was good. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, and we also were able to take some of those, what we learned from the virtual summer camps and create virtual after school programs. Um, like uh, we did the engineering after school and a cyber after school club. So, so again, very successful and just, you know, being, a, being agile and being able, being fluid and being able to change with the times. But at the same time, I got to say, I'm really thankful that we seem to be getting past COVID because a lot of our camps, all of them but two are going to be in person. To me, my personal opinion is kids need that interaction. They need to be with other kids. They need to be with the teacher. They need to be working, you know, in a group there. Virtual is great for what we had and what we had to deal with, but we're getting back to in person. And that's really, I think, the best, the best impact for the kids. So here's just some photos from, from our virtual camps. And you can see, you know, they're all on some virtual platform there. And again, they were still hands-on activities, but again, it's just, they were at home doing it in front of a computer. So, okay, metrics. Everyone loves metrics. Everyone wants to see metrics. I understand metrics are important. You know, when we re put requests in for funding, you know, you have to have your metrics. What have you done? Who, you know. So metrics are important, I understand that, but I just tell people you have to take metrics with a grain of salt because not all metrics are equal. So, I mean, you can see FY17, 18, 19, our numbers are pretty consistent for the different activities. And then 20, the course they dropped with COVID, 21, they were you know starting to come up maybe a little bit. And 22, we're, we're, getting, we're for so far for fiscal year 22, we're about halfway through it. And our numbers, I, I'm pretty happy with where they are. But for example, if you look at FY18, you'll see like 2,100, students reached. Hey, that's great. You reached 2,100 students. But what does that really mean, right? I mean, you could go to a school auditorium, have a special guest presentation or some demo, and there's 200 kids in there and they listen for half an hour. So yeah, 200 kids were reached, right? That, that's great. But that's not the same as 16 kids who come to a STEM summer camp and are interacting with an engineer or scientist for a full week and doing hands-on activities, right? So there, there's just a difference. I think there's some of those metrics, you know, like the in-person ones and the ones where it's repetitive motion, you're doing it over the course of a week, over the course of a semester. Those kids are gonna get a lot more, uh, I'll say from the interaction than just like, you know, a half an hour event. So anyways, we have metrics, we, we try and keep track of them as best we can, but again, not all metrics are equal. Okay. Lastly, before I turn it back over to Mike, I'm going to talk about our Air Force STEM PIA. And PIA stands for Partnership Intermediary Agreement. So it's a contract we have over from the lab with the Griffith Institute. And with this PIA, we support over 30 um, Air Force bases around the country. 
So basically how it works is Air Force STEM lead, right, Pat Air, Fo Air Force Base, they send money to us, we put it on contract to the G at the GI, and then over 30 bases are able to use that contract and take that money to support their STEM programs. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great avenue. Um, it's a great process. We, about three years ago, maybe four years ago, something like that, the Air Force STEM lead said, hey, we, we need to, to find some vehicle to get the Air Force STEM money to the different bases. And they looked at several different options. They came back, said, oh, the Griffiths Institute's gonna be the best one. And I was really excited about that. It's kudos to the information director and all the people who help support this. But as you can see, there's a lot of different bases there that we support, that's only some of them. But then the base leads, at these other bases, they can just call up the point of contact here at the Griffiths Institute. Hey, we need, we need some of that funding that we were given and put on this contract to you know, provide um, reimbursements for teachers or STEM equipment or whatever they're doing, they can do it through the GI. It's just a really smooth process for them. So I'm really excited about this. And through this PIA, I'm, I can very confidently say, you know, the impact is 100,000 students for sure across the country, just because there's so many bases who are using this. And this is a lot of the Air Force STEM money that we're, that we're uh, using with this PIA. Okay. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mike. We have some really exciting news and different initiatives that we're going to be um, hopefully uh, participating in. And so with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mike. Oh, my mic on. Before I get to the new initiatives, I'll... We'll try this again. I'd like to go off of what some Jeff has, has talked about and what we've done in the past. And, and I've been with the GI for about five years now, and I get to see these kids in the summer, okay, and the excitement that they have and the impact that we've made on their lives is, is phenomenal. A couple of years ago when the high school challenge, we had two young ladies come, they're from Clinton High School, came over here, they had nothing to do on their spring break. So they signed up to come to the Clinton Challenge. And so we get to talk to them as they're going through the, the, the week. And, and you know, one of the questions, what do you want to do when you get out of school? Where do you want to go to college? Stuff like that. Oh, I'm going to go in the nursery. I'm going to do this. They actually won that challenge. And by the end of the week, they both says, I think we're going to go into technology. Nothing wrong with nursing. Don't get me wrong. But because of this high school challenge, they were over, their eyes were open to the possibility of what they could do in their future and how we change. We as a community changed their life by giving this opportunity of the great, you know, it was a cyber problem, it was a cyber problem that year. And it's, geez, we had no idea this was even going on out there in the world. You know, we we're always told you, you could do this or you do that, but these different type of camps, that's what we bring to the kids. You know, the quantum camp was one of the first quantum camps across the United States given to kids. And as Jeff was saying, I always joke with the quantum folks, he says, my daughter works in the quantum area. To me, quantum starts with a K and not a Q because I'm a traditional computer scientist and I don't understand that, that element in between a one and a zero. But they take the kids very hands-on, starting with like laser chess to show the idea of how lasers work because that's what they use in quantum a lot and break down a lot of different experiments they do. So when they walk out of there, you see their eyes and their smiles on their faces. Wow, there's something exciting that we can do. And believe it or not, what Jeff is telling you about is what is done in our community. A lot of you out there in the, in the commercial world, in the contractor world, this is your community too that we're, we're educating these kids on. So some things we're talking about in the future See if I can work modern technology. And so Jeff introduced the first Lego League and, and we have this year funded actually really pretty well. But this is something we really believe is, is we can get together as a community and then people out there, you know, companies or, or individuals want to come and help sponsor either financially or with sponsoring teams or volunteering. This is, a, as Jeff said, this is a great opportunity to see the kids excited about the different competitions that, that they go on. I mean, the world has changed from when I grew up, okay? And I'm even experiencing this in, because I coached track in high school, okay? I have to share time with esports, okay? This is a new technology sport that's coming down to the future, okay? And we need to give our kids the opportunity these type of things. So we're looking for, for sponsorships, we're looking for funding to keep this event going on. As I say, AFRL helped us kick it off in the first year, but like this is something we wanna have continuing. We wanna be known in the Mohawk Valley region 
for people to come to to attend this type of event and they have an opportunity. Another thing we're talking about here is, you know, STEM, we are, it's been a great program. It's, it's not quite a year round program yet. The, the after school camp starts to bring that on. Okay, the, the high school challenge gives them the opportunity at spring break, but normally it's been a summertime program. And, and so what we're trying to do is create different opportunities where we can expand the, the STEM opportunity. One thing we're talking about here is, and this is actually gonna be a plug for New York Power Authority. If you've been over to the Utica Zoo, there's a brand new visiting center over there for New York Power Authority that they put up there. It's a STEM related activity. Theirs is all based around power and a lot of hands-on interactive type of activities going on there. Well, we'd like to create that same type of feel in part of our building here too. Okay, so we're looking for people who have ideas where we could set up an interactive area. So if tours are coming through or at lunchtime of a summer STEM camp, the kids can go and have this interactive type of area. Okay, and look at different things of IT type technology of, for STEM perspective. So we're looking for, for people who give resources, people have ideas, they can come in and, and collaborate with us on creating this area within the Innovar Advancement Center to be known as a place to attract kids to come in and they can do interactive things from a STEM perspective. So those are our asks, you know, our needs, our donations, volunteer judges. When you, when you actually run the first Lego, it's a big event. You need a lot of people there to help the kids through the event day. You need judges and things like that. We're also in our STEM area. We're looking for uh, uh, ideas. We're looking for people who have something that they could donate to be create this interactive space. We can continue to refresh this interactive space. And, and so therefore that's what we're looking. Those are our two major asks that we're looking for out of this Ask Me Anything session. Before I get to the points of contact, so do I have any questions out there for either Jeff or myself? Yes. So uh, you talk about first Lego League Hub. Are you guys going to be organizing like competitions around here? Yes. That's a, that's our ultimate goal. Yes. Yeah, the goal is to make it here. We'll yep. have all the competitions here in Navarre. Oh. So SUNY Poly was doing it, but for whatever reason they had to back out of it. They couldn't right. support it yeah. anymore. So we're trying to make the hub right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a first tech challenge coach. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this would at least be for first level league. I think first tech right. challenge would still be at Sydney Poly. They, well, they it's an MDCC now. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, one of my questions, one of my uh, follow on questions uh, will, like, so MDCC has taken over first tech challenge and it's basically all of upstate New York, anything from, well, anything north of New York City. Mm -hmm. um, there's 140 teams uh, in the area. What are, are you going to have a, the ability to uh, apply for grants for those teams if, if they're uh, school or community based? Okay, so I think your question is for the first tech challenge, right? So is, is there grants available? Okay, so there are grants available now with the Air Force STEM funding. Unfortunately, the way that the funding works, in order for us to sponsor a team, we'd have to have like a DOD personnel, either yeah, a coach say, or a mentor on the so team. Somebody, somebody from DOD has to be like right. a mentor. Right, right, right. So as long as that's the case, yeah, we do have funding available for that, yeah. Good question. Any other quick, yes? Uh, can you make the slides available? So I posted this, when I sent the, uh, the slides out with the calendar invite, they were on, but they're also on the, the Chief Engineers SharePoint site. Uh, the slides are, are there as well. And I, I think the GI sends, because I think they send out a link to all the people who registered uh, they'll, with a video recording of it and the slides as well. Yep. Anything out there in virtual land? No? Yeah, here, uh, I got a okay, question. Okay, so one last comment I'd like to make. If you ever came to the University of Advancement Center and took a tour from, from one of us or from me specifically, when I get to the end of the tour, what I talk about, it's not about the GI, and believe it or not, it's not about AFRL. It's about us as a community, how we can elevate this, okay? They're our lead right now, okay? They're gonna be a strong lead and always in the future, but how can the rest of the community come together in this whole STEM challenge and elevate it, come up with great ideas to get our kids excited and to show them there are opportunities to come back to this area and have great careers, okay, in the area of STEM, specifically a lot of what our 
defense contractors are and, and what a lot of AFRL is in the information technology arena. Yes. Uh, we have a question uh, from Zoom. Clayton would like to know, uh, are there any local colleges or universities besides SUNY Poly supporting these programs and the high school students? So at least with first, I know a lot of colleges are supporting first. I don't know them all. I know, I know Clarkson is sort of like the hub. That's kind of like where the, they, they kind of oversee the area. Uh, SUNY Poly does, as he was saying, NBCC supports it. I know I'm from Rochester. I know RIT supports them. I, so I know there's quite a few colleges and universities, but I don't know them all per se. Yeah. Does that answer the question or is there something, did I miss anything? The dead silence of virtual world as he types in. <laughs> um, Janik wants to know, uh, block coding was mentioned by Jeff. Yeah. Is it like Scratch? I, I believe so. I have personally haven't used Scratch, but basically it's like the Lego EV3 software uses that, Sphero uses that, where there's like, it's just block coding where there's a move block. There is a, you know, it could be a sound block. And you're, so the kids are just dropping blocks in, in sequential order to program it. Uh, I'm not sure if, I think that's how Scratch works, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and there's like, um, and then there's EV3 methods are very much like Scratch. Okay, okay, thanks. Any other questions out there? Yeah, so there's our contact information. So Mike's filling in for Kelly. Kelly's here at the Griffith Institute. My contact information, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, so with that, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs>